let's get so, to the 76 yeah. Wimbledon effort against Chris Everett. Looking back, I really didn't know what I was doing. Uh, techni technically, I was okay, but tactically, I, I wasn't. I wasn't fluent at all, uh, and uh, just played by uh, kind of the seat of my pants. And and I had a lousy backhand and a much better forehand, so I assumed everybody else was too. So I would hit to Chris Chris's backhand. <laughs> it was her best shot. Right. I would hit to Ivan Gulagong's backhand because it was a better shot for her. But I just assumed everybody had a lousy backhand because I had a lousy backhand. I didn't have a coach. Nobody told me, oh, you need to go to the forehand. So uh, I, I was without a coach for six years. I didn't know any better. My dad was my coach. I leave my country. I don't get a coach. It was the, if, I, if I have a regret, it's that I didn't get a coach. Uh, but I, did, I didn't know. At some point, you meet Sandra Haney, yep. who was a top-ranked golfer. And things started to change for you in that regard. Well, she helped me with my head. She, uh, because uh, as you could see, I was very emotional. And uh, she said, you know, when you lose a match because you're upset, you're only beating yourself. No, I, I didn't have any help from anybody on the mental. And, and that's when I realized, oh, she's right. I'm just, nobody knows I got a bad line call or I missed an easy shot. And that's why I got upset and I lost. I just lost. So uh, that's when I started becoming a little better mentally, controlling my emotions and, and channeling them the right way. Let's jump into the 1978 season in Wimbledon. Mm -hmm. and, and now, you know, this, this career's been building to this point. Uh, tell me how you are preparing for that Wimbledon. Well, uh, first of all, I lost those 20 pounds that I put on <laughs> in, uh, in, in 73. Then in 76, I did this training, really heavy duty training in Montreal, Billie Jean King and a couple other friends. We went for this two week training period and I, I really haven't done anything intensive. And uh, I lost 5% body fat. In I two was, weeks? Uh, in two weeks, I was down to 16% and guess how much weight I lost? Two pounds. <laughs> I lost but two pounds. Muscles five, heavier. Five per, exactly, 5% five body fat. It's so interesting to, to think that in this 78 Wimbledon, in the final, you're meeting Chris Everett. So, uh, so I played Chris, and, and it was my first Wimbledon final. She'd won twice already. When you walked out onto center court, what was the sense? What was the feeling? Like, what was the crowd? Did you get an idea of who the crowd was for? Oh, yes, they weren't. Uh, we were both bad guys that tournament because Chris had beaten Virginia Waite, who won the year before, who was British, defending champion. Chris beat her in the semifinals, so she's the bad guy. And I beat Ivan Gulagong in the other semifinals, who was the darling of Wimbledon, so I was the other bad guy. So they were kind of like, eh, they didn't really care when we were there. They just appreciated the tennis. Well played. Oh, she's put it in the net. That's it, that's it, and a truly wonderful victory for Martina. And one feels sure that this is the first of many victories. She was promising at 16, she's the champion at 21. Yeah, so, I mean, you saw, you know, we were friends, and she was happy for me. Genuinely yeah, that, I mean, that was me. a genuine, yeah, like, was hey, happy, for, happy for you. She knew what it felt like, because she'd won it twice already, 74 and 76. And, uh, and, and for me, it was very bittersweet because, again, my family wasn't there. I didn't even know if they could see the match. Uh, my father somehow called me about two hours later. I had a phone call in the locker room, and it's my father on the phone, which I have to this day, I don't know how he got the number, how he got connected, because to make an international phone call was a procedure. So I found out then that they watched the match because they drove to Pilsen, again, that town close to West Germany. And I watched it on TV there. Oh, that's what, was what I said? found out that they I mean, I, I can't imagine what that conversation was it's, like. They were just happy. I think they'd been drinking by that point. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were very happy. But uh, how did how did uh, Martina feel about uh, winning the ecstatic and, and sad that I couldn't be with my family because this is what we dreamt about for so many years. You win in '78, and then '79 rolls around, and you're right back in the same situation. Yep in the final right. against Chris Everett. And did you know your mother was coming to Wimbledon in 1979? The Duchess of Kent uh, kind of intervened and, and convinced the Czech government to give my mom a visa. So that was the first time I saw her in four years was at Wimbledon. To this day, I don't know how I put one foot in front of the other. So, yeah.
When you saw her, what was... Did you have to come to her? I, where? I, I went to the airport, and uh, I, I don't know. Again, I don't know how I managed to play, but it was just, we were so thrilled that it was a positive. You know, you kind of forget the years that had gone by and just uh, so happy that we were actually together because we didn't know if we would ever see each other again, you know? So uh, it, was, it was an escape in a way. And, uh, and, then, I, and then I played even better. And uh, and the funny thing was that playing Chris again, the, the, they, they were cheering for her a lot more than for me, but I still managed to win. So yeah, and by the end of that '79 year, you're ranked number one in the world. But but how, how do you how do you keep that fire lit? I love I love the sport. It was that simple. I wanted to be a better tennis player. You know, I, there was still some. I, I knew I, I still didn't reach my peak. I could still get better. And. Uh, I was 20, what, 22, 23. It's like my career is ahead of me. So uh, you, you didn't think in those long terms and, oh, I'm number one, I can relax now. You just wanted to keep playing. I love the sport. That's why I played doubles every tournament. And maybe that's the record that I'm proud of the most of the really? records that I hold is uh, I won singles and doubles in the same tournament 80 times. Wow. Uh, 80 tournaments. God. So that's... Uh, that's, uh, that's a lot of tennis, but it just didn't occur to me not to play doubles because I had so much fun.